Good afternoon, it's July 22nd, 2022. It's Friday, Friday. Not that I have to be too cheerful, but I gotta work it. It's everybody else that has to uh, enjoy it. And hopefully they get to do it with ride share, which is what I'm doing. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because something of an article that came up in California, a state that I normally don't even tackle because it's not here in Texas. Texas has enough problems and things to point out on their own. Unfortunately, this has to do with um, with the gig economy, the gig workers' uh, jobs like mine. And it's in California. AB5, which is a California Assembly Bill number 5, a popularly uh, bill known as the Gig Worker Bill, is a piece of legislation that requires companies that hire independent contractors to reclassify them as employees. Now, I hardly ever mention this, but this is actually a problem um, that I used to speak up against before I decided to come out here with these uh, with these uh, podcasts and and uh, comments for for uh, throughout the Uber world, you know, the internet and all that. Um, it was other um, it was other apps that I would voice my concern through this. Let me uh, let me go ahead and explain here. It originally designed, its original design was to regulate companies that hire gig workers in large numbers, such as Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash, gig uh, business like that. Policies like this, this AB5, uh, creates a level playing field between gig economy workers and those hired as regular employees. That's false. <laughs> um, there's there's four particular statements here that I got to tackle with uh, heavy explanations. Please bear with me. I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can because on YouTube is a little bit more limited time than there is for uh, um, the other podcast on Anchor. Uh, Anchor.fm slash uh, forward slash Chris hyphen comments I'll post that in the bottom in the descriptions okay creating a level playing field so far that's very unclear as to what do they mean by that because there's a huge difference between uh, contract workers and workers that are actual employees okay hired on regular employees uh, regular employees go through hours uh, they work eight-hour shifts as opposed to contracts that get to work up to 14. They work an hourly wage as opposed to um, uh, a portion of each ride. And um, everything's pretty much restricted to that time period, that working frame, as opposed to the flexibility that the, uh, that the gig workers usually do. For example, I have to go to court in about an hour to pay a speeding ticket. Um, so I get to shut off the uh, the, ooh, the uh, app. I get, take my lunch and I do my commentary. As soon as I'm done here, I'm off to go pay my speeding ticket and then I get to go right back to work. You really can't do that as an actual employee. And I'll, I'll get into as to why, which uh, brings me to uh, point two <clears throat> Point two, this policy supposedly entitles workers to a minimum wage, employee benefits, and other perks. Okay, the first thing, entitles workers to a minimum wage. No. No. I've already worked minimum wage jobs. I have no intention of ever going back to that especially seeing as how here in Texas, even if the federal mandate is $15, here in Texas, it's still seven twenty, no, seven seventy-five dollars per hour here in Texas. So the minimum, and seeing as how the minimum wage has not officially been declared by the government at, through, as a national level, a federal level, hell no, no. 
Um, employee benefits. Now, currently, we are in charge of our own benefits as uh, gig worker contractors, okay? We're in charge of that. That's not a problem. That's really not that much of a challenge. And other perks. Okay, I don't know what that means by other perks, but I'm assuming maybe some kind of bonuses or something like that. Technically, in the gig economy, um, when the business has made X amount of money, they actually throw extra cash per rider, uh, per ride, okay, in certain times. Uh, it can be as little as two bucks. It can be as much as six bucks. One time I seen it as big as 14, but that was one time. Um, so whatever you're making, you're making a, a, a $9 fair in 20 minutes tack on two bucks as little as two bucks or as bit as much as six dollars and you're already over a ten dollar for that hour most likely it's usually within that half hour of the hour so you have a chance to make another uh possible score that large to come up with 20 bucks by the end of the hour which is usually what i do i'm usually doing about 20 bucks an hour um you can't do that on a minimum wage. You can't do that as an hourly minimum wage. Now, I understand there are people that say, that say, well, you know, I know this guy, he works a wait staff. He's one, he once brought in 600 bucks worth of tips and all this good stuff. And his minimum wage is $2 and change. True, but that's a waiter's position. That's not even a, a, a food delivery drive. There's no way in hell. And I've, I've done it for a couple of weeks. I'm going to do it again uh, just to see if I can score more. But I've done a couple of weeks of it. And no, there's no big money in working as a rideshare driver, food deliverer. Okay? You're, you're getting only tip money. And, and, the only, and the only good thing to say about this is that you're doing it uh, on a flexible app. You know? Um... So, no, uh, I don't understand what free other perks is. Now, here's something that, that it's, it's claiming that stable hours. The flip side to that is the potential loss of flexibility in regards to the, those hours for reclassified workers. If we are declared employees, we now have a certain amount of hours that we're permitted to work. And then it's usually straight with like a half hour lunch break and that's just wrong you don't do that to a, a, a gig worker who's based on the number of requests for rides or in this case the, this subject was brought up in California concerning the truckers uh, who are told that they're going to be expecting to move to stop their strike and stop their protest by Monday you know, they need to get their their affairs sorted and, and they need to move on. Um, which I think is very wrong. It's a very wrong thing to do to those truckers. They need to get paid by the minute. They need to get paid by the mile. They need to get paid by the car, uh, cargo. If, if that's what it entails concerning uh, certain cargo that comes in from overseas out of those ports in the West Coast. They need to get paid that way. They can't. You can't be telling them we're going to give you a minimum wage because the minimum wage required to sustain a reasonable living is fifteen dollars an hour, which might be fine if you're working in an hourly wage job, living in a little apartment or a house or something. But when you're a trucker, you got to pay for the expenses of maintaining your truck. Same thing with the gig economy here as a rideshare driver. I'm going to fill you in on an ugly reality, but it's still a good rule of thumb. When getting into this business, 40 to 60% out of your entire year goes right back to your business. And that's saying a lot given the fact that this isn't like a coffee shop where it's a building where you have to maintain everything where 40 to 60% of your, of your year's profits goes right back to that building. No, this goes to the car. I am constantly changing tires, constantly doing oil changes, constantly changing brakes, constantly changing, repairing cracks on the windshields. I am constantly cleaning 
uh, the, the upholstery in here. All of that costs money. All of that costs money. And uh, updating the phone as well. Some I'm doing this podcast off of my phone, in my car, in my lunch break, like normal. You know, there's no way in hell I'd be able to manage that with a minimum wage. Not even a minimum wage with all the t- gratuities tacked on. No, there's a reason why I'm being paid uh, every mile and every minute. Regardless of cargo, regardless of this, regardless of that. There's a reason why I'm getting that along with a couple of uh, 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 service charges and service fees, a uh, little bit portions out of those tacked on. And if I'm lucky, I get a gratuity. Okay, now I don't really focus on gratuity. A lot of people do. They'll put a tip jar or something in their own vehicle. And I understand that. But even still, to, to think that I'm getting a minimum wage and being able to maintain uh, my ride and everything else while keeping up with the criteria, no, that's just not gonna happen. It is a bad, bad thing to do. Um, finally, here's here's a here's a concern. Reclassifying costs could raise prices for consumers. Okay, it is not going to could raise. It will raise prices. Now, during this inflation, it is tough enough. I am very challenged, very much so, with the time between each request. Okay, they have gotten further and further apart once this inflation and price gouging, you know, uh, even and even with all of us playing it smart, no longer buying udon noodles, having to resort to ramen noodles uh, and, and et cetera, et cetera, canned goods over fresh produce and all this other stuff. The list goes on. We're all budgeting now. We're all trying to make this work. And then to top it all off, what's budgeted is the rideshare rides something that before even the pandemic was being used and abused left and right? You know, we were getting we we're getting to the point to where we we the drivers uh, wouldn't go into any of the college areas unless we were desperate for for money, and that's because some college kids would request an Uber. We're taking you know eleven to fifteen minute drives all the way to that college dormitory you got college campus just to give a ride to the other side of that college campus and it, I mean I'm telling you it, it was messed up but those were the challenges that we had to meet which is far different from the challenges that we're meeting now where it's high inflation everything costs too damn much and the requests are just so far distanced uh, so far distance from from each other, the, the time between each request is is horrible. Um, reclassifying us as employees, having to put, having to have uh, benefits and other perks through a minimum wage, that's just horrible. That is not going to do anything except have high costs on the consumers. Okay. And as you see, it's, it's with the current inflation, without the, uh, um, the gig workers being, you know, compromised, it's already expensive. Now, here's an ugly reality. It's an ugly, sad fact, but it's the truth. All of this is being done in California, and it's being proposed by Governor, Democratic Governor uh, Gavin Newsom. He's the one that's trying to make this law, and and it's a, a very horrible thing, you know. I don't know how to contact the guy, but if I if I find a way, I'm going to tell him it's it's the wrong move to take, okay? Because I get it, I get it. Nestle being an example, Nestle bought, paid you know millions of dollars for a dam. They cut off once they owned it. They cut off the water and started using it to be whatever they collected to be for their bottled water company. And, but the repercussions to that is on the other side of that dam where erosion started to take place. Crops weren't getting their water. Uh, there was a photo of a fallen tree uh, taking place by this newlywed couple that was getting married in front of that tree. 
it turns out the ground eroded so quickly and so fast that the tree fell out of the ground and, and collapsed, almost killing that couple that was having their wedding in front of the uh, in front of that tree. And it sounds just so bizarre. You know, take a look at those photos, and holy crap! You know, it's it's you know it's real. And it's all. And when everybody asks how could this happen, well, they actually traced it to the lack of water uh, due to a closed dam that was owned by Nestle. You know, so when you've got when you got something, a company like that, you need a politician that'll go after them to saying, look, you're profiting, but you're destroying things. You're doing this and the workers, you're not even, you know, you're not even hiring new people and all this stuff. And then to top it all off, you're a threat to the, uh, to uh, agriculture and, and people that are just trying to take a photo in front of trees for crying out loud. I get it. I get it. But I also see the bad move that's being done here, going after the gig workers as opposed to the gig economy. Uber, Lyft, they all started, they both started, and maybe even DoorDash started in California. They're making billions of dollars a year. The owners and CEOs and all those in the Treasury Department and all them, they're not paying taxes. They're not paying taxes. They're not paying their fair share. They're, you know they're making over $400,000 plus, which is what the, the tax wealth plan, the wealth tax plan was set for by Biden. And it was agreed upon, more than likely, by Newsom. Uh, but here's the thing. He's going after uh, gig workers, trying to make... Uh, the, let's, let's, let's start with this gig worker, uh, Uber, to pay, uh, to pay for, you know, uh, benefits, other perks, and a minimum wage. Something that we all dodged. We really don't want that. Uh, and all this good stuff and and Newsom dropped the ball instead of making Uber and all the CEOs and all those that are high up there thinking that they're so rich they can do whatever they want such as sexually harass drivers and, and at one time try to pick a fight with them uh, one of them actually tried to pick a fight with a driver you know they were thinking they were so rich that they were above the law you know, and that's who Newsom is trying to go after. I get it. I get it. And the same thing with those truckers that are pulling out shipments of freight from the harbors of uh, o Port of Oakland and and uh, different parts of the California uh, seaside ports. Uh, but here's the thing: instead of going after the trading industries or the or the major corporations in the trade industry. Newsom is trying to force fair and civil rights and taxations uh, by going after the gig workers, the truckers in that case, us rideshare drivers in my case, and delivery drivers in DoorDash and Uber Eats and Grubhub's case, you know, which, which again leads to that disappointment kind of feel, okay? The, the disappointment is Governor Newsom you know, his heart is in the right place, but his mind has got to wake up. He's got to switch. He's got to move that target off of us workers and put it back onto the uh, the billionaires, you know, who, the billionaires who are not affected by any, who they, they're not going to be affected by this minimum wage employee benefits and other perks. Um, because all it means is that the, the billionaires that own the businesses just have to rework themselves to every normal, everyday business, especially given the fact that it's in large numbers. I get it. I get it. One of the things that Obama did was make sure that as long as everybody had more than 300 employees, that corporation or company had to pay, make sure that they paid for their health care. You know, 300 was the number. So you started to see a lot of uh, businesses let go of their employees to stay under there to keep from paying uh, uh, health care. Now that lasted good for a small while. It was actually a really, uh, uh, it's just business smart idea. You know, congratulations and blah, blah, blah. Um, but as time went on and more productions 
you know, maintained and everything, uh, Amazon being one of the prime examples, well, it became more important to hire more employees and just, you know, do give them the damn benefits, you know, which is something that Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and others are just not doing. They're not doing right now. And right now, because the law is in their favor, it's just business is what's letting it be an excuse or their reasoning, despite the fact that there is no excuse for this type of um, abuse of, of uh, company policies in order to keep the billions while the rest of the workers have to work their own. But again, gig workers, with all this flexibility, and, 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 and somebody like me that took the time to get to know my city to where I can actually work 20 bucks an hour plus, um, you know, we, we're by policy left on our own, ergo, we work on our own and that's, that's what we do in order to maintain this kind of life. It's just not gonna pan out if we have to be restricted to a minimum wage because in order to be restricted to that, you also have to be restricted to the number of hours. And the number of hours, this is a flexibility job that has to be flexible with the number of requests. Right now it's summertime. There's an occasional uh, festival that comes up every now and then. And it's sometimes profitable, sometimes nowhere near it compared to the fall and spring uh, months uh, where you'll have a ball game here in Texas at Central Time starting at 7 p.m. It finishes at 9 just an hour after 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock is when some musical or some play, you know, Hamilton, Lady Saigon, Cats is still popular uh, down here. All times in the Central Time Zone, uh, play times start at 8 o'clock, you know. And then in another side of the downtown area or, or the city, you got somebody like... Uh, like the weekend, you know, or, or, you know, uh, a comeback of, of, uh, of, uh, like, like run DMC making a comeback or something like that. Somebody doing the tour. Okay. A big name act, Taylor Swift coming down, you know, or is, is Selena Gomez or whatever, going back to the music. Well, the, the opening acts may start as early as seven 30. However, the main stage, the main performer, whether it be this uh, Miss Swift or, or, or you know, uh, the, the comeback of a rap group or The Weeknd, somebody in the hip hop, Bruno Mars, you know, the main acts always start at 9 p.m. and they finish at 11. So even if I'm not getting everybody to the, uh, the, the sport, the play, or the uh, performance concert, I can make myself available for those that want to leave at the three, uh, the third, uh, not the third inning, the third uh, quarter of the game, be to beat the crowd, to beat the crowd uh, around the 8.30 to 9 o'clock times, 9 o'clock being when that game is finished. I'm taking everybody home from that game. By that time, by the time I'm done, I get about two or three rides and then I'm getting um, those from the play or the musical you know, home, which again, starts, oh, playtime starts at, uh, showtime starts at eight and, and finishes around ele uh, 10. So I'm taking them home. And usually about 11 to 11, more like 1130 is when you're going to see those uh, performers, you know, big name concerts start to, to finish. And I'm taking those people home. Uh, and it's, if it's about 11 o'clock or 1130, some people still think that it's okay to get to a club. So it's a little bit of a bonus there, picking them up from the that to the club, you know. And, you know, some weekends like that, on one single night, you know, you can make two, three hundred dollars easy. You know, you can't do that on a minimum wage. You know, two, three nights, those, those uh, three from seven to eleven, those four hours. Or rather, the end time, the end times from nine to eleven thirty. You know, you're banking. You know, you can't bank like that if you're having set hours all the time. You're not going to make something like that here in the summertime. Hell no. 
Nobody wants to load up the cooler and Uber to the beach. Nobody wants to Uber rideshare to the lake. No. If anything, the group of guys and a group of girls and a group of uh, couples are going to do or when they dibby up. They're going to dibby up for more beer and some gas money, you know. No, nobody's going to be doing that for, for a ride share to the lake, you know, to the park, to grill something at the park. Nobody's going to ride share to the park. No, you're not going to make anywhere near as money as you are in the, in the, in the evening time at, at, uh, in, in the fall months or the spring months. Summer package tours. Yeah, there's summer package tours. You know, we down in South by Southwest here in Texas, we have Austin city limits, you know, but that's once a year also that's also that's once a year and 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 it's you know to think that oh my gosh i can only do uh uh five to to nine uh no five to what is it five in the morning or seven seven to three thirty crowd you know and the show time start as early, as late as nine thirty you know at the at the summer package tour i mean i'm uh you nine thirty in the morning you know i'm i mean it just sucks it's dumb. Classifying us as employees, having to go through minimum wage, employee benefits, and other perks, regulated, uh, our, our regulation of our hours, of our pay, um, and then to top it all off at the cost of raised prices uh, for the consumer, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. I get it, Governor Newsom. I get it, but you're making the wrong move here. You're making the wrong move. You're hurting the employees. You're not. You're not taking care of us by hitting the billionaires that run and govern uh, the 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 companies. You know, they're pulling a billion to two to four billion dollars a year. They can handle whatever uh, uh, you know taxation or whatever. You know. Um, but that's my spiel. Uh, I'm going to cut it just before half an hour. Um, you guys take care. Stay safe out there. Um, my next segment is going to be a, a, another complaining one until uh, for, for right now. It might be something that, that's, uh, that's worthwhile. But just remember, no matter whether I'm complaining or explaining or whatever, I'm doing everything, uh, talking about these things as uh, on a common sense, on a common ground level. Because everybody else is saying you're doomed. We're all doomed. Okay. Just don't forget the reason why you're coming here to this to this uh, channel. It's because, um, you know, you got everybody getting so emotional and, and, and yelling and, and complaining. And they're all on their, they're all positive that they're right. And all this other stuff. What I'm doing is just taking a step back, looking at everything, and then sharing with you what what's going on through that without joining anybody's rhetoric without joining anybody's um propaganda okay uh and this here is is uh you might think well how can you say that when you're affected by what's going on by this subject and all this other stuff technically i've been affected by this subject i've been uh opposing uh, um minimum wage for you know since 2017 when I first started rideshare because people just don't get it if there's a minimum wage there's a set hours there's a certain criteria to meet whether you can meet it or not it doesn't matter you just have to meet that criteria and you have to do it within a 40 hour week uh, uh, work week and uh, it's nowhere near as flexible it doesn't provide it this is the wrong thing to do it with as far as trying to set us as ordinary employees. You know, Amazon is one of the prime examples of that. Okay. You have deliveries that you have to make. They're all timed. You have to figure out the time and the best routes to do them. And at best, you're getting a company vehicle to do it in. And at the most, you're making about a hundred dollars a day, you know, Unless you're devoting yourself with uh, beyond an eight, unless the company is letting you go beyond eight hours a day, and you're working and working and driving, because uh, as as in point of fact, you're taking on average of 20 minutes from point A to point B, you know, 
you're getting off, you're doing this, you're registering there, you're going online, you're going to the next one, which is another 20 minutes to get to a destination. Now keep in mind, this is all after you've got your products and your, and your uh, items already in your vehicle, which could take up to an hour or so uh, when you load up, okay? Unless you're quick like that one uh, on YouTube where the pallet guy pulls up and the person's just chucking all of the boxes in there whether they as they're tumbling around and everything in the back of the vehicle you know I really doubt that that's actually helping in any way shape or form but you get what I'm saying uh, it's an unreasonable criteria it's an unreasonable criteria of funds to achieve it's an unreasonable criteria of doing it in in a certain amount of time and it's very very unreasonable to be doing it where flexibility is most important and I understand that you know they're getting paid we're getting paid only a few cents you know per mile per minute for me here in San Antonio Texas is 62 cents a mile and 12 cents per minute a considerable drop from five years ago when it was a uh, dollar per mile and 50 cents a minute okay uh, and then it dropped down to 70 cents per mile and 35 cents a minute and then it dropped down to 62 cents a mile and now it's 12 cents per minute and it's a challenge it's been a challenge from the very beginning for me because I've said through other uh, po posts I started when the gas shortage came and I had to park in line before the gas stations opened and, uh, and and get in line and fill up the tank and make use of that one full gallon for the rest of the day until I ran out and until I had just enough to get to the gas station the next morning you know um, that went on for only about a week or two and then I was everything went back to normal uh, as far as gas uh, accessibility went and then I got to earn a lot more you know I got the chance to go back to making a living this inflation and the gas prices and all that, it's just another challenge. It's just another challenge. The drought, the hurricanes that hit this uh, this town uh, during 2018, I think 2018, before 2019, uh, it was just another challenge, you know. Uh, a lot of people didn't go to work. A lot of people uh, lost their houses. A lot of people, as the air go, nobody was using Uber. Uh, the heat now is a pain in the butt nobody wants to go out anymore they all want to go to and from work using their own rides and then uh and then staying home uh, the pandemic was also another problem everybody had to stay home lockdown non-lockdown it didn't matter it didn't matter a lot of people were saying oh the world's coming to an end because of the lockdown it i saw nothing different i saw a problem that nobody wanted to go out because of the pandemic not so much because of the lockdowns Okay, um, it's just the lockdowns didn't help anything. Uh, neither did the anti-lockdown. We're gonna rebel and all this stuff. I saw nobody saying, "You're right. I went to Uber to the nightclub tonight." You know, no, nobody did that. Nobody did that. You know. So, oh man, I said I was gonna finish in half an hour. It's already past half an hour. All right, uh, I'm throwing it out there. Back to the point. I understand what Newsom is doing. He's making all the wrong moves right now. He needs to take the target off of us and put it onto the billionaires and go after them in whichever way in order for them to pay their fair share of taxes and, and which will boost the economy and help out the, the state of California immensely. It'll help out every state. But in, on this subject, in California, Newsom and every politician like him I understand them, but you're going at it the wrong way by going after the workers. It, it's 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 no differently than when the companies were price gouging and jacking up, hiking up all the prices, going after us. Once they found out Biden had a wealth tax plan, to where they who were making four hundred thousand plus dollars per year, you know, or more, have to pay taxes, their fair share of taxes, you know. They, they, they lashed out at us to try to teach Le Biden a lesson. It's so far still not working, although it probably is. I'm, I really, it's, it's just not working in my mind. Uh, the majority of my fellow state Texans 
still believe that this is all Biden's fault. You know, Biden's not responsible for the gas prices hiking, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've rented this before on previous posts. Uh, I'm not going to do it again. Uh, I'm just going to say, look, I'm sorry. Newsom and anybody that's on Newsom's side, you're going at it the wrong way by lashing out at us. It's no different than when companies did it to us with their price gouging and all this stuff just because they don't just because um things aren't going the right way you know you got to stay focused you got to keep your target on the actual people that are causing problems not us workers okay and that's all that i'm saying and that's all i'm gonna i'm gonna stop right now and uh i'm gonna let y'all get back to your lives uh while i get back to mine like i said i gotta go pay a speeding ticket mark mark so we'll catch you later. Y'all take care. Y'all take it easy. And no, by the way, the speeding ticket does not affect my uh, employment status. Another thing that, um, another reason why I don't want regulation is because, you know, when it comes to records, it's going to be bad. The, to top it all off, the speeding ticket wasn't even while I was working. It was while I was on my way home. I was tired. I needed to get home. There was nobody on the road except one motorcycle cop. You know, I was that close to going home and closing my eyes and getting my rest. And that cop messed it up and all this good stuff. You try saying that to your job, especially a regulated job that has hourly wage and all this other stuff, criterias, it's not going to fly. It's going to count against you. The only thing it's affecting is my insurance. Uh, and that's not until... Uh, the new policy starts then it'll be recorded and it'll have to be recalculated and all that right now everything's the same so you see the the, the dilemma okay now I'm gonna shut up y'all take care y'all take it easy stay safe out there we love you very much uh, take care take it easy and um, have a good one okay enjoy yourselves this is Chris with Chris's comments signing out